Are you ready for an easy card? That's amazing! Let's head down to the crafting table. Let me show you what I mean. We are going to make a shadow box card today. Look at this. You pull it out. Do you see how this butterfly moves? Not only does it move back and forth, but it also wiggles. Oh my goodness, this is so easy to make. Let's do this. Now, the first thing I do whenever I make a card is I decide on my color palette. What is the pattern paper I'm going to use? And today's card, we're gonna let our pattern paper do a little bit of the work for us. Now look at this, this is gonna be our background. And I wanna remind you, all the supplies and materials will be listed over on creativemomentsbyg.com. So you don't have to worry about writing those down right now. So let's go ahead and make our base card. Now what is so fantastic about this card is this is a normal base card. This is an A2 card. Now make sure you stay with us to the end because I'm gonna show you another little idea that I have that really jazzes this up. Plus I'm going to point you to a video that'll show you just how to do it. But this is your normal card. A lot of times you see these shadow box cards and they're very small, not this one. And you're gonna ask me, where can you write your sentiment? Well, you just flip it over and write it on the back side. So, go ahead and cut your two panels that you need. Now, our panels are going to create our card and our panels need to be six and a fourth by five and a half. So we're just going to extend our arm on this trimmer and we're going to six and a fourth and five and a half. Now we are going to cut that twice so that we have two pieces. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to create some score lines on the long side of both of these pieces of cardstock. So we're just gonna slip it in. We're going to score at half an inch, move it over and score it at one inch. And now we're just going to scoot it on over and we're going to use this side of our trimmer now to score at half an inch and one inch. So now we have our score lines. Let's just repeat that. Now we're going to bring in our bone folder and we're going to give this a good crease and just fold back. So we're going to do the other side. Fold in and fold back. Let's repeat that with our other piece of cardstock. Now, these two pieces put together, just like this, create our shadow box card. Do you see that? It stands up perfectly, and we all want our cards to stand up, don't we? So, the next thing we want to do is create a shadow box. And so, I'm going to let some pattern paper do the work for me on the front. I'm going to cut a mat to go right here before I cut my opening. And our mat is going to be four by five and a fourth. And the reason I'm cutting it that size is that I want to leave a little margin around the edges. I want you to see a little bit of that white on the front of my card. So we have that one cut. Now let's go ahead and use our glue, and you can use wet glue at this point, or you could use a tape runner, whichever you feel more comfortable. Now I wanna wiggle, wiggle. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use some wet glue just so I can get it in exactly the right position. So we're just going to flatten this out a little bit just for now and I'm going to lay this down and wiggle it exactly in the position I want. We're going to let that dry for just a second. Now the next thing you'll want to do is grab your dies. You can use squares, ovals, rectangles. I'm going to use circles and I'm going to nest my dies because I have a really neat tip for you. I'm going to take the largest one and I'm going to center it right on the front of my card and now I'm just going to cut that out. So here it is. We're just going to pop it out. We're going to save this beautiful circle for a future card. And now I'm going to give you a little tip here. A lot of times when you have a shadow box card, this part gets very wobbly. And so we just found a scrap piece of cherry cobbler or red paper and I'm going to lay this down right like this. So I say go ahead and just glue it down to the inside of this card and then I'm going to show you our little trick. Now you don't want any glue in this area so let's just go ahead and put our glue all the way around our opening. Just going to lay this down just like this. And it just so long as it fits your opening. Now I'm taking that nesting die and I'm going to put it right in the center and I'm just going to cut that using our embossing machine. Okay, let's just go ahead and pop that circle out and look at that beautiful frame that I have. Oh my goodness. Let's fold this back. So far, this card is so easy to create. Now, all we need to do is go ahead and put a panel on this back part of the card. So I have decided to use this beautiful forest with some birds on it because we are going to add some birds to the outside and inside of our beautiful card. So remember, this inside panel is just going to be four by five and a fourth. Now, if you have directional paper, you want to make sure that you cut it exactly right. Our column size, or right here, is four, and it goes down five and a fourth. That's the way I think of it. When I go to cut it and trying to decide how to cut it, because my paper's directional, I always think of a column, and you want the shorter distance on the top. So. Let's go ahead and just glue this right down on the back side of our card. Now, let me show you the stamp sets that we've selected to work with. We're using the dies for this beautiful bird right here. We stamped this wreath so we could put it at the top, but I wanted a different sentiment. So I just found a sentiment that I really liked and that it fit with this card out of So Sincere. Now, letting the pattern paper do the work for me, I used this beautiful DSP that we have that has all these birds. We actually have a die that cuts out the birds and here are the birds that I cut out. Look at those. Are they not beautiful? Now, a little tip here. This branch extended too far. So I went ahead and I just cut it off. And then I added it back in over here. So look at that. You can still, after you use your pattern paper, make it yours by, you know, cutting some additional areas. Now, what we're going to use this acetate for is we are going to cut a little three inch by one fourth 
strip. Actually, I'm going to make it one half because I have rather a large sentiment. Because that is going to run across the entire opening right here so that we can put our sentiment on it and it will look like it's floating. Now, remember I said stay with us because we have a, another card to show you that uses critters to float in the card. So what you need to do here is we are going to decorate the front of our card. So, like I said, we colored this beautiful wreath, cut out these beautiful birds, and we are just going to put our birds right here. Now, look at that. Look at how pretty that's going to look. And because we already have dimension, I'm just going to use a tape runner, and I'm just going to put some tape down here. So I'm going to grab my silicone mat. I'm going to be very careful and just add a little bit of tape. I'm going to put it right on the front of our opening, just like this. Oh, look at that. So pretty. And now we want our wreath right up here. Look at that. And the reason I'm putting these on first is that we can flatten it out and work with it much easier, but it also tells me where I want to have my sentiment. So let's just get this lined up with a little bit of tape. Now you can put it on dimensionals if you want, but I just wanted to lay it flat and as high up as I can go without showing anything right there. And now we're just going to fold this in and we want our strip not against this. So the way we're going to put our strip is just turn this upside down, grab your strip, and we're gonna put it right here on this folded area. So I'm gonna center it. So I know I need some tape right here in the center. And I'm using tape runner because you do not want it to slide. You want it to grab and be exactly where you want it. So I'm gonna put this right in the center, just like this, look at that. I'm going to bring in the background. I'm going to use my tape runner and just add some tape. You can also use tear and tape. And if you want to, you could use wet glue, but you will have to hold it together for a while. So we're just gonna Close this, and I'm just going to lay this right on top. Now, this is directional, so make sure you have it the right way. So I'm just going to do one side first. Just like that. And then I'm going to bring in this one, fold it over. and then just lay it down right on the card. Now, I went back in and I cut a longer strip so that I could put it in the center. And now all you have to do when you have this longer strip of acetate, just bring in your scissors and snip it off. Now, because we put it on the center, we put it right here in this area, the acetate strip. Look at this. Stands up perfectly, creates that shadow box, and now we have our sentiment to add. So all you have to do is get it right on that strip and just glue it down. So I'm gonna bring in Tape Runner and just put it, and look at that. Look at how pretty that looks. Oh my goodness, so easy to design. Now, here is the one. We just put a little strip of acetate right here, but still right there on the center, and when you move it out, 
the butterfly moves with you. That's another way to use your acetate. And finally, look at this card. Do you see this when you squish it? That moose really comes over those trees. You can pull it apart. Now here we have a piece of acetate on this side, right, coming in from the middle right here, and then another one separate from that for our moose. And that allows you to move them independently of each other. These both move independently. This one stays exactly where you've placed it, standing up perfectly, but doesn't really spread here on the side. It's more of a stationary shadow box. Well, we hope you enjoyed this card and it sparked some creativity for you. Maudie and I wish you a day filled with creative moments and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.